Miss Debbie, I mm -hmm. see we have birdhouses. So let's talk birdhouses. Well, this is a very fun time of the year. Spring and summer is the time when birds are going to be nesting. Okay. We have a number of birds that actually come all the way from the neotropics and different parts of South America just to come and nest in our area. So cool. we should be very honored mm -hmm. to have them come into our yard. But having said that, some of them are open cup nesters, such as birds that you might see every day, like your cardinal. Okay. That would build an open cup nest in a tree or a shrub. Or some of them are cavity nesters. Another bird you're familiar with as a year-round resident would be your chickadee. Mm -hmm. And it would take a birdhouse or an abandoned woodpecker hole in a tree. Okay. But because of urban sprawl and, and <laughs> things such as that, so many of our dead trees have been removed. Uh -huh. So we can help birds along by placing birdhouses for them. Some birds, believe it or not, build in very peculiar places. We always hear about birds nesting and hanging baskets on a front porch <laughs> yeah. or the wreath on the front door, uh -huh, uh -huh. which uh -huh. changes our routine somewhat for a few weeks. Some of them use unusual nesting material. I've seen a robin's nest lined with milk straws in a schoolyard. Wow. That, yes. Okay. Unusual. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and you can actually tell who nested in your tree or your shrub or your birdhouse by what materials are used. Okay. Such as if you open a birdhouse after they're finished nesting and you find a very soft cushion of moss filled with some plant down and maybe some animal fur, then it's maybe a chickadee that was nesting in there or a tufted titmouse. So there's things that you can do to help them along. You can hang up a nesting ball. This is cotton. Now all species of birds, each species will use the same type of nesting material. So if you were to hang this up, you'd probably have maybe a chickadee or a finch or a tufted titmouse pull from it. Okay. If you have some pine straw out in your yard, you probably would have if your area has bluebirds, they would like the pine straw or the grasses. But don't put out drier lint because drier lint will disintegrate when the rains come and then okay. the nest will collapse. Another thing that you could do is put out short pieces of string, not long, three inches or less so the little nestlings don't get tangled up in it. Okay. But you can put houses up. <clears throat> Smaller birds are going to use a smaller house with an opening of one and a half inch to one inch. The most common is a one and a half inch opening and that's going to take your chickadees, your tufted titmice, your nuthatch, Carolina wren, uh, downy woodpecker. Some of them, birds, your larger species like your kestrels, your flickers, uh, eastern screech owl, they want a bigger house. <laughs> Uh, with a three inch opening, okay. two and a half to three inches, and of course a larger structure. This house is designed to be mounted on a pole, where some birds like to have their house hung in a tree. Yeah, it's nice, I like that. If you're hanging it in a tree, you want to hang it, wedge it in between the branches so it doesn't swing too much in the winds, because those eggs are fragile in the house. Now. If you're doing a house such as for a smaller bird, one and a half inch opening and a four by four or a five by five floor space. If you're doing your larger one for let's say your Eastern screech owl, you want an eight by eight floor space and quite a bit taller, a 20 inch frame going up. If you're mounting this one on a pole or this one, Sometimes folks like to see things that are aesthetically pleasing to them. The birds aren't going to be concerned with the appearance. The birds are looking for this cavity okay. here. Yeah. So you can mount it on a pole five to ten feet high. Or if you're doing the larger birds, you can mount it on a pole or a tree trunk ten to thirty feet high. But you want to see what's going to make a good house. And just as when we're looking for a house, there's certain things that we're looking for That's for right. our families. 
The birds are looking for a house that's going to have thick enough wood for insulation. They want a house that is going to be easy to open. This one happens to have two ways to open. You can view from the top or you can clean out on this one from the side. Nice. Cleaning out is very important okay. because if you don't clean out after each brood, remember the story of the princess in the pea and the mattresses getting higher? Pretty soon, after maybe four broods, three broods this summer, the nestlings would be right at the top, uh -huh. and it would be easy for predators to grab them out. Okay. So you want to be able to clean out. What, you would, want, you, what would you use to clean it out with? Uh, you could use a stiff brush, okay. garden hose. Birds aren't clean. They don't clean up <laughs> after themselves, <laughs> although the parent does take the fecal sac every time and fly off with it. Huh. But there might be some whitewash in there you want to clean off sure. with a stiff brush and maybe some vinegar water. Okay, vinegar yeah. water. Okay. Also, you want to have drainage. A good house is going to have either corner cuts or holes in the bottom. So when the rains come, you're not sitting in a wet mattress or mm. a wet nest. Mm -hmm. This one has a slight overhang. This other one has even more so. And that's to prevent the rains from blowing in, and that'll help to keep them drier as well. This one also has that round circle on the front, and that's to prevent predators from reaching in and taking a nestling. Yeah. Mortality rate in birds is very high. Spring is a very fun time of the year and summer to watch birds raise their young. Uh, it's probably the best of nature, mm. but it's also the worst of nature mm. because you see so many nestlings that don't survive. If you have an existing house that's just flat across the front, you can add a block of wood to the front with the same size opening, and that would make the reach farther in for your predators to get in. Or if you have squirrels that think that it's a house for them, <laughs> or woodpeckers are making the entrance too big, you can add a metal ring to it, and that'll that. prevent them from, from entering into it. So if you do put up a house, make sure that you're targeting the species that is in your habitat. For okay. instance, if you live in the heart of the city and you want bluebirds, I'm sorry, you it's probably won't get them. Okay. But if you live in an area that's more open, uh, like a park setting or a golf course, or has open field with just a few trees. Yes, you could possibly have our eastern bluebirds who are year-round residents here, mounted on a pole, five feet up or higher. Um, keep predators out. Predators can be raccoons, they can be snakes. Snakes, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So you wanna put baffles on the pole and you want to put predator guards onto your house. Be patient might take a while to get a response. If nobody comes within two seasons, move your house okay. to a different area. Okay. And uh, try not to use pesticides, because many of these birds are gonna use insects for their nestlings. Which brings me to, if you want to try to attract nesting birds, provide live mealworms as a food source in your yard and always have water. But just put your house up, sit back and enjoy, Oh, and I forgot to mention one thing. Keep your house away from your bird feeders. Okay. Birds like privacy, and they don't like all that activity of the other birds. So just have a good time with it. Have a good time with the birds. That's right. In the birdhouses. Thank you, Ms. Debbie. We appreciate that. You're welcome. That. Thank good information. you.